Hi everyone, we want in this video to summarize for you the investors, the conference that was held today, the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange with the main speakers. So let's start. Hi everyone, my name is Doron Coadier, VP Business Development here at Foresight Automotive. In this session, I'll provide a brief update on the latest development from Foresight Automotive. Foresight Automotive at a glance. Foresight Automotive develops 3D perception solution based on stereo technology aimed at existing ADAS system. ADAS is Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, all the way up to full autonomous system. It's a software company. We use hardware, but off the shelf hardware like cameras and chips, but we focus on software and algo. It's actually a spin off of Magna BSP, the main shareholder. Uh, basically, we took the defense technology and civilized it and brought it to the automotive industry. And the technology is based on Magna's two decades of expertise. Founded in 2015, roughly around 75 employees, uh, mainly in the R&D, 10 patents in different stages, duly traded in the NASDAQ and the stock exchange with a main value proposition of uh, 3D perception stereo solution. So what do we do? Basically, the, the heart of what we do lies within stereo, okay? Using two cameras mimicking uh, how the human beings see with two eyes, same idea. So we add stereo technology, add different modules, software modules like automatic calibration, which we'll talk in a second, 3D point clouds, long wave uh, infrared cameras in order to see in harsh weather and, and other modules. We can actually split our offerings into two to support ADAS, levels, level one and level two in terms of autonomy. Um, and we'll talk about scale cam and mono to stereo, which really, th this is really, really very unique solution aimed at the ADAS levels, the lower levels. And we have the quad side 2.0 2.0 that supports the autonomous driving solution, level four, level five, uh, which basically allows us to operate under harsh weather uh, and lighting conditions. Now, in the next few slides, these are trends that we have identified which are very relevant to us. First of all, just for you to understand, the, the new, these new development lies on a basic software model which is called automatic calibration. Basically, using two cameras in stereo, you need them to keep them calibrated at any given time. Using the automatic, automatic, uh, um, automatic uh, calibration module, we can now synchronize and calibrate the cameras at any given time using software. And this allows us to uh, evolve to the next generation of uh, stereo um, developments and stereo products. So the first market trend I'll talk is about industry looking all the time to stretch sensor capability. Scale cam, our first uh, offering, scale cam comes in. Basically, scale cam is a separated stereo camera solution. So let's look very quickly on the video. So basically, uh, the first thing that we can do by separating the cameras from a rigid beam and put them, uh, we can actually put them in different locations on the vehicle. There's a lot of real estate. We can put them in the side mirrors. We can put them in the roof racks. Uh, we can put them in a grill. OK, we can put them behind the windshield at a much wider distance between the cameras. There's a lot of real estate behind uh, uh, using scale cam in which you can put on the vehicle. Another uh, um, important thing is increasing the distance accuracy. In this configuration, this is very similar to a traditional stereo, very small baseline. A baseline is the distance between the two cameras. As we look down the road, and in this case up to 400 meters, ahead looking at a, a, a truck, we will notice that uh, at uh, this uh, distance, our accuracy error is 9%. This is not good enough. Okay, so basically, in order to increase the distance accuracy, we are actually increasing the baseline, the distance. And now if we look again, roughly at the same distance on the truck, we manage to improve the accuracy to 5%. Okay, and this is acceptable by industry. 
We obviously can perform uh, 3D point cloud, which is the basic layer of our technology. Not to mention as well that we can add uh, thermal cameras, okay, that allows us to detect any obstacle under harsh weather conditions. In this example, driving on a very foggy day, snow environment, on the right hand side, regular stereo, left hand side, thermal stereo, we can pick up all the objects on the thermal which we cannot pick on regular cameras. And this is the power of thermal stereo, the ability to detect any obstacle under harsh weather and lighting conditions. To summarize scale cam, again, it allows us higher distance accuracy at longer ranges, flexible camera placements around the vehicle, and with the use of thermal cameras, 3D perception in harsh weather conditions. Moving to the next trend, enhancing existing ADAS system. Basically, uh, industry wants to improve uh, ADAS systems as they do not work very well. And this is uh, relevant now to a product which is called mono to stereo. Basically, mono to stereo is the ability to create 3D stereo perception from existing mono cameras only using software. Now, this is very exciting. Okay, so let's let's learn a little bit more about it. Basically, let's take an ADAS camera and a parking camera, which is in the grill, which is already in the vehicle. They'll continue to doing ADAS and parking uh, cameras. But what you can see is uh, that they have, they're both looking at the same direction and they have an overlap in the field of view, painted here in red. This overlap, this is where we can create stereo without adding any hardware. Just adding a piece of software to the vehicle and presto, we get 3D perception. This is how the raw data looks from the two cameras, parking on the left, ADAS on the right, completely different cameras. This is the depth map we create from it, the basic layer of a pixelized map, okay? And this is the basic layer on top of which we add different layers like the detection layer you see on the right, okay? So this is basically mono to stereo, Obviously, we can create point clouds, as I showed you earlier, uh, which is very relevant to the automotive industry. But to summarize here, we can create 3D perception using existing mono cameras. Now, this is a big thing. There's a lot of excitement in industry about it because it reduces the hassle of adding more uh, uh, hardware in order to increase the performance of the ADAS systems. And just by using software, we're adding an additional layer of information and layer of safety to these ADAS systems and therefore enhance the detection and perception capabilities of the ADAS systems. Another trend is extend extending driving range of electrical vehicles. Um, Again, the industry is moving towards electrical uh, vehicle adaptations. I don't know if you know, for example, in China, any vehicle from the year 2030 onwards must be an electrical vehicle. And one of the more most important thing is what's the range in which uh, you can drive using the battery uh, on the electrical vehicle. And one of the things that uh, we can extend the range of these vehicles is obviously using less energy consumption. And this is where we come in with our technology as a passive technology. Passive as opposed to active, active as a LiDAR or radar, they emit energy in order to hit the object and get the reflection back to know what's out there. We just stare at the environment and collect the information. As we do so, we use less energy and therefore we can now extend the range of driving of EVs. Last trend, stealth capability in defense. Okay, our technology is very unique because it's stealth. I mentioned passive earlier. Here we're passive, we do not, do not emit energy, you cannot detect us. Therefore, uh, you can imagine the importance uh, of the defense uh, uh, use of a, of a passive system. And again, this allows us to provide 3D perception for the defense world. Uh, allowing both ADAS capabilities all the way up to uh, uh, autonomous, full autonomous capabilities. And this is with our technology uh, our offering, which is called QuadSight 2.0, which includes both two sets of stereo, the regular sets of stereo, visible cameras, teamed up with thermal cameras that allows us to see in any uh, weather and lighting conditions. Let's talk a little bit about the market traction. Um, so first, commercial agreement with Albit Systems. 
uh, I don't know if you know, but back in mid 2019, we signed a commercial agreement. And since then, I think, you know, we really progressed with Elbit, which the peak of it is a customization project with Elbit for 3D perception solutions to meet the end customer of Elbit, which is the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. And Elbit recently presented our joint solution at the Eurosatory Defense Exhibition in Paris, which is considered a large land defense exhibition in the world. In addition to that, we successfully completed a proof of concept with a leading European OEM, and we announced a few uh, interesting POCs, one with ZF, which is a global tier one, ranked number three in the world. And this uh, follows the winning of the CES uh, pitch event held at uh, CES event in 2022, followed by a, a joint POC with Hitachi, which is a global stereo vision tier one. Uh, recently, we just announced a joint POC with a leading American EV manufacturer. And obviously, we're continuing to conduct multi, uh, multiple uh, POC projects with leading OEMs and tier ones in North America, Japan, Europe, and China. Just to dive in and talk a little bit about a few of these proof of concepts. So first one is ZF. ZF is number three in the world. Number one is Bosch. Number two is, uh, is Denso. And number three is ZF. Huge T1 in the world of automotive. We actually won the CES pitch event that was held in January 2022. It was an event, uh, a sort of a competition between different startups in the field of ADAS. And we won the first prize. The first prize is actually a joint proof of concept with ZF. Um, and it's based on the mono to stereo. What I mentioned earlier, the ability to create stereo from existing uh, uh, existing uh, cameras on the vehicle. We just recently completed the POC and now we're talking about a uh, next step. So very, very proud of ZF. The next POC with Hitachi. Hitachi is a global stereo vision tier one, very famous in the world. They're developing stereo vision solutions, for example, for Subaru, Suzuki, and others. And again, this follows a successful evaluation of quad side vision system prototype, which they tested previously. And now we're doing a joint proof of concept, again, on mono to stereo. Uh, and we're very happy to do so with Hitachi, which are experts in the field of stereo. Elbit Systems. I mentioned Elbit Systems, and again, I think this is very exciting because what we actually have done, we actually replaced the LiDAR solution, which was used by Elbit Systems, by our solution, our passive stereo technology solution. So this is really exciting. And basically, we customized a 3D perception solution. Basically, we're the eyes of this vehicle you see here, okay, that allows us to drive, for example, autonomously, but not only can do other things. And again, this solution is intended for a few defense related projects. Um, in terms of markets, um, again, we have the military market, we have the autonomous vehicle market and industrial. So these are the markets we're focusing at. Military is more the short term. I mentioned Elbit, I mentioned where we progressed with a vehicle that was presented at Eurosati, we with the eyes, which is based on uh, our technology. So very relevant and a huge advantage there with our passivity. Autonomous vehicles, again, this ranges from passengers all the way to autonomous. Autonomous vehicles is, is uh, all the time, you know, being postponed all the time. This is the reason in the automotive industry we're focusing with the mono to stereo solution, our software solution to improve existing ADAS solutions, which are relevant now. And lastly, another uh, area which we're active in is the industrial vehicle solutions, mainly agriculture. Agriculture uh, is, is very uh, known of using stereo solutions either for autonomous operations, autonomous driving. Okay, so we're very relevant. So these are the areas that we're focusing in terms of markets. And lastly, uh, sales cycle. This is actually the sales cycle uh, we work with. Um, it has five different stages. Obviously, up to now, we did a lot of engagement, either selling prototypes, doing a lot of tests, doing technological roadshows in which where we fly out to customers and show our capabilities in front of the actual customers. Uh, I mentioned the next stage is a few. Uh, I mentioned a few proof of concepts. This is where uh, uh, we're putting a lot of efforts now, uh, putting more and more paid proof of concept. For example, I mentioned ZF and Itachi. 
And now we're actually at the co-development stage. This is currently where we are uh, with Elbit Systems in the defense world, but obviously we're pushing you know, from the automotive industry to get to the same point. In the, in the end, we want to get to the design wins and mass production, which is this is where the big money lies. So that's it for the moment. So thank you very much for joining me and have a great day. Hello, I'm Oren Baron, Vice President of Global Operation and Business Strategy. I'm glad to be here today and welcome. Okay, so let's move uh, to a deep dive focusing on the Chinese market. So overview of Chinese China market automotive. Foresight as part of its uh, strategic uh, work plan took a decision to focus on China. One of the immediate questions which may come up is why. So looking into a, a McKenzie & Company article, which has stated that already today, China is the largest automotive market in the world. Not more than that, already back in 2009, China passed the United States to become the world's largest and most important automotive market. Having said that, of course, China market is not something that you can ignore. You can decide whether to jump in or to stay out, but you can, you must learn the Chinese market and its trends. China is not just about automotive, but also China has the potential to become the world's largest market for autonomous vehicles. In McKenzie company forecasts, such autonomous vehicles could, could account for as much as 60% of the passenger kilometers traveled in 2040. So it seems like way ahead, but you need to bear in mind that if you want to be in the game in 2040, you are starting now the development of such solution and you should join the market in China if you want to be a major player. Based on that, as I mentioned, we took a decision to take part in China uh, journey. Next graph presents the Chinese power in terms of autonomous vehicles. On the left hand side, you can see the, the how the traveled kilometers by vehicle type. And starting 2030, there are semi-autonomous or autonomous vehicles starting uh, to be traveled on the roads. In terms of percentage on the right hand side, you can see the percentage of such a portion and that starting from 2030, almost 15% of the vehicles traveled on China road will be autonomous. And by 2040, 60% of the vehicles traveled in China roads will be autonomous vehicles. As I mentioned, you need to be in the game today if you want to be part of the solution in 2030 and definitely 2040. If we look on the use cases of autonomous vehicles in China today, such autonomous and semi-autonomous vehicles are already on the road, focusing on low-speed solutions, such as uh, geofence uh, solutions in terms of airport, aircrafts, uh, campus, university campus, and others. But already toward 2027, you can see that the use cases in which China will use autonomous vehicles will be not just low speed, but also for nighttime driving, uh, peak hours and other scenarios. And by 2032, the technology in China will be able to support almost 100% of the use cases and scenarios in which autonomous vehicles will be in use, including high speed and urban uh, solutions. So China is doing major steps into becoming a world leader of autonomous vehicle solution. And based on that, as I mentioned, Foresight decided to take part of this uh, technology and solution in this uh, geographic area. So what is the opportunity? In Beijing, actually, they are spending 1.5 hours every day on commuting uh, traffic. It is three times more than in US and Europe. So the, the pain point 
the problem in China is major. And because of that, they are focusing on autonomous vehicles. In China, there is also regulation similar to the one in the US and Europe, focusing on AEB, autonomic, automatic uh, emergency brake uh, features. And that is also pushing the market in China to emerge new technologies to support this uh, type of solution. From that reason, China OEMs and Tier 1 are looking for foreign in initiative technologies to enable them high levels of vehicle autonomy. In other words, it means that China don't have this, the knowledge of how in-home or in-house, and they are looking to cooperate with foreign companies in order to close the gaps. It is also supported by the government in the five, in the over the past, the last five years, it, the Chinese government supported by founding more than $7 billion in order to expedite and accelerate the technology emerging and development in China for autonomous vehicles. Only in 2021, we can see that there were transaction, business transaction in value of $100 billion in merger and acquisition, development and business cooperation, all of these in order again to make sure that China is doing in or moving on in the right rhythm towards a autonomous vehicle solution ahead of the rest of the world. Based on a benchmark which we have done, we can see that already today more than 150 companies are registered in China for autonomous vehicles. All of them are very quality and skilled companies. In order to become a player in China, one of the first things that you need to do is to be a Chinese company. From that reason, we have established a subsidiary in China, especially in Shenzhou, focusing on Shenzhou, which is CICP, China-Israel Cooperation Park, cooperation between the Israeli and the Chinese government. And you can see by the, the, the picture and the image, which is from the park, I love Israel, that they are really welcoming Israeli companies to become a player and partners in China. This is also supported by a very nice awards and benefit program. We also received, in order to introduce our technology, a demo and testing ground, very impressive environment in order that we will be able to demonstrate foresight capabilities, technology capabilities in terms of night vision using the infrared cameras, and of course, the 3D perception using the visible light cameras. So China market traction. As I mentioned, we established a full owned local subsidiary in China. We already have strategic cooperation with leading uh, infrared camera manufacturer in China guide infrared, understanding that it might be difficult to import into China. Uh, thermal sensors, cooperation agreement with Chinese leading T1 Sunway, uh, artificial intelligent uh, solution in Chengzhou, which together we will commercialize autonomous technology to the Chinese market, and I will elaborate more about this very soon. Cooperation, other cooperation with Shandong and other institutes focusing on autonomous solution, and multiply proof of concept project, which we already have conducted in China and dozens of leads of uh, in, in China and discussions. Let's focus a bit on the cooperation with Sunway and Foresight. Sunway is a tier one focusing on development, design and manufacturing and sales of intelligent vehicle products. If you will look on the profile of its management, you will see that it is combined from a, with very skilled leaders from companies such as Bosch, BMW, and Bike Group, one of the leading Chinese companies, and together they have established this company, bringing the knowledge of how, know-how and the connection. And they are interested in foresight technology of visible light and infrared stereo technology to be integrated into various autonomous solutions. One of the immediate solution that we are applying for is airport solutions. If you remember on one of the previous graphs, I mentioned that low speed autonomous vehicle is already implemented in China. 
and our technology hopefully will be implemented on one of the solutions such as boarding truck, fuel charging truck, logistic or baggage uh, towing truck using autonomous vehicles with foresight sensors and technology. Overall, the presence of foresight in China is intensive and impressive. We are doing POC and uh, leads and have leads with multi OEMs on autonomous vehicles and other solutions such as you can see on the left hand side button, a autonomous uh, truck for autonomous farm. We are taking part and participating in leading conferences and exhibition, introducing our technology, hundreds of meetings, and all of this in order to make sure that we will become a leading player in China, which is looking exactly for companies such as Foresight. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Dro. Pleasure to be here today. I'm the COO and Deputy CEO for INET Company. In the next few minutes, we're going to tell you a little bit about the company, who we are, and what we are doing. So, INET, we are an all road users safety solution company. We believe in changing the road safety paradigm. A little bit about the company, who we are, and what we are doing. We are an Israeli based technology product company. Founded as a company in 2018, although we started as a project within our parent company, uh, Foresight Automotive, so we have a little bit less than six years of activity uh, under this uh, project. We are engaged in the design and development of cellular-based accident prevention solutions. Essentially, what we are providing is a software add-on, meaning an SDK, that can very easily be integrated to third parties' applications and services and provide pre-collision alert to all road users. We have one patent already registered and four more uh, on, on the way. 25 employees in total working on this activity. But where's the problem? What we are aiming to solve? So this is the first scenario. We call it the reckless pedestrian. One who is just, just jumping toward the road the moment he's in front of the vehicle. No sensor whatsoever will be able to prevent this collision. We want to take an advantage of the fact that he is using smartphone and also most likely the driver a smartphone within the vehicle, create wise seamless link between the two and alert them both much before they can see each other. Meaning that we are providing two innovative approaches. The first one is that in comparison to standard advanced driver assistance systems technologies, which analyzes a very designated field of view, INE analyzes the entire space and ca capable of calculating potential collision and alert to the uh, potential participants much before they can see each other. And the second one is that in comparison to advanced driver assistance systems, which are capable of alerting the driver or giving indication to the vehicle, we are for the first time alerting to the pedestrian, the cyclist, the motorcycle users, in addition to the driver, giving them just enough time to participate in preventing this collision. The second scenario, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit more graphic, but let me assure you that the one to be injured over there is OK, just looking or fine. It's the micro mobility vehicles within urban environments, those that tend to be the most vulnerable road users today uh, in terms of statistics. We are also capable of preventing such collisions. And the third one, which is the most obvious one, vehicle to vehicle, you'll be able to see car coming from the left hand side, crosses the junction in red light. This scenario in terms of conventional means, advanced driver assistance system, is hard, if at all possible, to actually prevent. With our system, with the INET system, this one out of three is the easiest one for us to predict and prevent. In terms of statistics, according to the World Health Organization, every year there are 1.35 million people dies from road accidents. The majority, in between 50 to 60 percent in relative to the year, are the vulnerable road users, meaning pedestrian, motorcyclists, and micro mobility users. Now, the number decreases, and one of the most horrifying uh, number of statistics I heard is that in an average, one pedestrian is killed every 101 seconds somewhere in the, in the world. Now, the trends or, or, or what actually uh, uh, fuels these numbers are two trends. The first one is the increased usage of smartphones in the last decades, meaning that every one of us 
walks, drives, rides. While smartphone in hand, we want to take this distraction and turn it to be the substrate for our solution. And the second one is the micro mobility usage in urban environment, which creates a very dense and unpredictable environment. And as a derivation, the numbers of faculties increase in the urban area. Now, today, autonomous companies try to tackle this problem by installing many sensors around the vehicle, sensors such as radar, cameras, and leaders. All sensors, even if differ in the physical approach, comply with two fundamental concepts. The first one is that each sensor scans and analyzes a designated field of view. And the second one is that each sensor either alert to the driver or give indication to the vehicle. Now, in the future, autonomous vehicles will be able to communicate one with another and share information. This area is going to be a much more safer area because of this ability to communicate. Now, when talking about V2X, meaning an IoT of vehicles, the main approach is right now going to rely on designated hardware company, co components, chips, which are going to be installed within the vehicle, but this one or this solution suffers from many drawbacks. The first one, additional cost due to the fact that we need to install another hardware component, component within the vehicle. Second one is an additional emitting technology, and that sets two concerns. The first one is um, uh, health concern because it has additional uh, emitting technology. And the second one is the mutual interferences in between sensors. The third drawback is a long penetration cycle. Autonomous uh, uh, or automotive uh, industry is very long paced penetration cycle, uh, subject to binding regulation, very tough one, and effective mainly, if not only, for vehicles and infrastructures because the pedestrian and the cyclist user do not have such or will not have such uh, uh, components in their hands. And last but not least, it is a complicated uh, version update process, which is not really intuitive for the user. We believe that the entire, entire paradigm of road safety needs to be amended. We believe that the solution needs to be an holistic, a global one, which provide alert to all road users, meaning driver, pedestrian, cyclist, and all of which, the ability to foresee oncoming collision without a designated field of view, to be able to utilize already existing infrastructures without the need to install an additional component with a very short penetration cycle, no additional cost, and very easy and intuitive for the user. And here is where INET enters. In terms of our solution, we have three solutions right now, but the concept of our fundamental, the core development of the solution is the ability to prevent collisions. A little bit about, about how it works, then every mobile which installed with our software, transmit its location to our cloud servers. The servers then aggregate the information from all users and distribute it wisely, effectively making each of the smartphones to be aware for the rest of the smartphones or smart devices in its vicinity. From this moment, each of the smart devices acts as an independent calculating unit, which calculates the probability of collision with another smartphone meaning an accident. The moment smartphone identifies it is about to be part of a collision, it alerts to the user by all available means for us, meaning haptic, visual, audio, flashing, everything we can in order to draw the attention of the user, taking into consideration that even if just one of the sides changes its trajectory, the entire equation of collision does no longer exist. Now, behind this very nice illustration, we have highly sophisticated algorithms engine, which capable of actually prevent this collision. For example, the ability to pinpoint in a relatively very high accuracy where, if and when there is going to be a collision, prediction, extrapolation, uh, latency compensation, uh, uh, adaptively for each of the smartphones and many other algorithms which create this ability. This is how it looks in, in a demonstration. What you'll be able to see is a demonstration between vehicle and electric scooter. In the right hand side, you can see in blue the reference application, which just shows how everything runs in the background. At the beginning, the system will classify us automatically as a vehicle, car, and calculate our trajectory. At some point of time, the system will consider the electric scooter as an hazard. It will give it a classification, in this case, a bike, calculate its trajectory. And from the cross correlation of the two trajectories, the system calculates probability of collision according to our proprietary algorithms. Once it reaches 100%, it alerts to the user, giving him just enough time to avoid this collision. 
In terms of our solution, we have uh, three main solutions, as I said, all of which are under the title the INET Protect family of products. The first one, the INET Protect, is a free of charge solution. Uh, which we are offering as it serves our penetration model. It gives the ability to prevent collisions. And we have two more solutions which are going to serve our revenue streams and provide many other uh, features for the users. For example, automatic emergency service, uh, cyclist ad notifications, and many other. But in the next few minutes, we will keep focusing on just the INET Protect, which is our core development. Uh, about our solution and its unique characteristics, we have many. I will just specify a few. The first one is that we are protecting, as I said, most road users, not just the pedestrians. We are capable of working under all weather and lighting condition because we are not really relying on any kind of a sensor. We are essentially relying on cellular infrastructures, which are not really prone to be affected by lighting or weather conditions. Our solution is very accurate derived from the algorithm engine that we developed for uh, almost six years. We are GDPR compliant, meaning that we are complying with the very, very tough regulation of uh, privacy, uh, the European uh, privacy uh, user uh, regulations. We are a totally anonymous service, which requires no registration, no profiling whatsoever. We are capable of working under iOS, Android, and also native Linux, meaning that we can ca capable of working on uh, inside of the uh, automotive or, uh, or vehicles. Hands-free meaning that we are, do not really require any kind of involvement from the user, everything running as a background process, which alert in the critical moment. Now, in terms of business traction, um, uh, what we did in the, last, in the last few years to actually be able and declare our solution ready for commercialization, we passed thousands of simulations, hundreds of demonstrations, dozens of trials around the world with dozens of pilots with a few significant companies. Large scale trial here in Israel with uh, approximately 8,500 users. Uh, extensive technology uh, due diligence with uh, huge Japanese companies last for uh, one and a half years and still in process. One integration in Israel with a company by the name of uh, Saver One. In the last one and a half years, we focused in three verticals, four geographies in total. The verticals that we, have, we focused on are third parties applications, mainly location based services applications like navigation and shared mobility, micro mobility, meaning scooter, electric bikes and all its relevant applications and the automotive industry uh, applications like dash cams, uh, head up displays, infotainment systems, advanced driver assistance systems, and also directly with OEMs and tier ones. And the geographies that we focused on are Israel, Japan, Europe, and India, in all of which we have, uh, we had pilots, trials, uh, some of which are still in uh, progress. Critical mass, the way to actually prove product uh, efficiency. Um, for INET to prove its efficiency, we need critical mass. Critical mass doesn't necessarily mean dozens of millions of users. We need density. Density means that we need to have a lot of people in relative to the geography, meaning that if we have just 100,000 users spread all over the US, it will be much less effective than to have the same 100,000 users just in the city of Tel Aviv. This is what density means. Now, in Israel in 2021, there, are, there were 361 people killed in 333 fatal road accidents. In comparison to 326 fatalities in, in 288 uh, fatal road accidents in an average in between 2018 to 2022. Meaning that despite of the fact that more and more auto automotive technologies and sensors are penetrating to the market, there are still an increment in the numbers of fatalities. Those derived from the two trends that we discussed a few uh, minutes ago. The first one is the uh, smartphones usage, and the second one is the micro mobility. Now, INET is working right now to agree with few companies to prove its efficiency within Israel. Under few main claims, the first one is that it is enclosed territory with very high smartphone adoptions, currently around 80%. Density meaning population per square kilometer. Right now, the number is 400 people per one kilometer, one square kilometer in Israel. 
the ability to protect millions of users in one single integration. This is the great benefit of having an SDK, meaning a software add-on that we're actually installing or integrating within an already existing application and enjoying the benefit of the already existing install base. We are providing full transparency about the solution, about the data, about the calculation and the analytics that we can provide. And last but not least, we believe that our solution is going to be all blue and white solution, which will set the mark on a new model for road safety worldwide. In terms of summary, we see INET as a global solution that answers a real need. It is smart, simple, save lives, save money, and above all, with a very short penetration cycle. It protects all road users, first to the market, as far as we know, with a full, verified, tried and tested multi-platform safety solution. It's a fruit of more than five years of development, and it is available right now for commercial integration. So this is in a nutshell about Titanet. Thank you very much.